Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of the Agile Pubcast. This time, Paul Goddard, Nigel Baker, and myself, Jeff Watts, got together in Bristol, and we found an interesting new place called the Bristol and Bath Rum Distillery. This place had a massive still where they made their own rum and a load of mini stills upstairs where people could make their own. We thought it was an interesting innovation, which got us talking about innovation. How to pivot a business, when to pivot a business, the difference between exploring and exploit, and possible contenders for the next Kodak moment. Well, pull up a drink or a shot and enjoy. Play the jingle. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Take these off now. <laughs> uh, right. Cheers. Oh, right, hang on a minute. I think I've done a port wine. Oh, oh, come on then. What are we, where are we, what's it called? Just the Bristol Rum Distillery? Bath and Bristol Rum Distillery. Bath right? and Bristol, rather than Bristol and Bristol and Bath. I can't remember. I, I think it's Bristol and Bath. Should be, rum shouldn't it? I think. Because we're in Bristol. Yes, we are. In Bristol. In, in a rum distillery. <laughs> what's the road called? Park this Street. is Park Street. Park Street, near the university. We are sat in the ruins of a Jamie Italian, which is what this used to be. Sure, it's it? got a bit more yeah. history than that, isn't it? Uh, a, before that, it was a black on the yeah, door. Before so. that, it was a uh, bookstore, uh, a Blackwell's bookstore. And before that, there's a plaque outside saying someone yeah, used Thomas to Gibbs some Gibbs scientist. Or yeah, used to live here a long time before us. But mainly, it's where I got my university books from. Which okay. I think was about probably about here. I was paying for an overpriced, underused uh, textbook manual. Blackwell's bookstore, was it? Or was, yeah, it, was, was, was yeah. it a Blackwell's? Yeah, it was a Blackwell's. Yeah. Always used to, seem to, used to be University Blackwell's. I think they've still got one around the corner from the uni, so yeah. Mm. Not riveting agile. Stuff. So it's quite new. It's quite new, and it does have an agile theme. It's been here two months, apparently. Experimental. So they're creating their own. It's gonna, it will be, they're waiting for the license, distillery. Uh, and we're going to get a tour. Yes. Oh, wait. So yeah. we'll, we'll take some they're pictures. Take, they yeah, they're going to give us a tour. Yeah. Spoke about We've there. got 20 there, um, something stills upstairs, What's and this is the age? aging, the barrel aging behind the camera, you which see, you can't, can't see, but we'll take photographs. That's something that looks really good. It's good for radio. It's yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're, they're sort of flagship rum. It's called Dead Man's Fingers. You notice they've got dominoes on the, on the barrels. You know, yeah, that's that? the numbering convention, I think. So that's like 66 over there, and that's 70. It's like a puzzle room. It's like a puzzle room. yeah. We've also got um, distilleries behind us for bespoke individual spirits they said they're going to create for this. Cocktails? Yeah, mm. for their cocktails. Yeah, it's very cool, very cool. Um, and I say it's an agile theme because there's a lot of, a lot of experimentation that goes on when you're mm -hmm. distilling things and creating new As drinks you and new know, cocktails. Mm -hmm. In fact, opening a new business completely is yeah. one large experiment. True. Uh, so is this, the, is this their only one or have they got one in Bath as well? I don't, I don't know. know. I, th I don't know. I've seen this in Bath. I'm assuming there must be something, otherwise <coughs> it's not really Bristol and Bath, it's more just Bristol. Bristol. Hmm. Unless they've got plans, and they're yeah. trying to future-proof the name. But then it would only be two cities, wouldn't it? So yeah, true. Only, if they come to Cheltenham, they'll mm. be stuffed. Mm. So, anyway. Anyway, drinks, drinks. I'm, I'm on a lager this morning. <laughs> called the Peaky Blinder. Uh, mainly because I'm in the middle of watching Peaky Blinders at the moment. Is that oh. why you picked it? Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my sister-in-law used to work on Peaky Blinder. Like really? The production company. They okay. It. Very cool. So. Very cool. A little, little um, dinky <coughs> can. Mm-hmm. What's it like? It's, um, well, it's a lager. It's cold. <laughs> it's it's, it's a quite crisp. lager. Yeah, it's not, it's like 4.1%. It's golden in colour. Tastes, tastes a little bit. Well, no, it's definitely better than your your bog standard things like Carlsbergs and whatever. Okay. It's, it's got a little bit more character to it, a little bit more slight bitterness to it, which which is nice. Hmm. You guys are on the. Me and Nigel drinking the same thing. Oh, here we go. There's some some rums. Uh, since it's a rum distillery, what have you got to have? So oh, there's some rums. Coffee, dead man's fingers. Dead man's fingers. Dead man's fingers. And then we've got the spiced rum, which is the one that we're going to be distilling on site. Wow, spiced rum. And then we have got the hemp. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, Thank you very much. Oh, no, it's not working. 
see, or... like I said yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. going for the coffee, are you? The, what's the, what's That's the, the coffee. One? This is the one they're brewing on site. Okay, it's spicy. I've got a lot of spice. CBD thing. I like the glasses though, you've seen the yeah. glasses. So, yeah. I'm not sure it well here, but. For the yeah. benefit of the camera, they Crystal can see skull. This. Well, I've just got a generic glass. It doesn't That's say true. it all, really. Skull, skull, generic. Mm. Um, so, we're going to drink this. Is it in one go? No, you sip it. I'm going to sip it. We can pass them around, try the different ones. We can share glasses, different sized glasses. So, nice, okay. That's very nice. That's. Um, Spicy. This that's is nice. This coffee. is nice. That's that's pretty that's, good coffee. I would say that's spicy. I would say it's, it's strong, but it's not. That's a very mellow flavour, that one. Oh, that's lovely. It's quite. That coffee really, really nice. What do you think of that one? I thought it was quite mellow, but it's spicy. But quite it just tastes like fire water. Yeah, that's good. Oh, <coughs> What's that one? It's like a, it, it's not that spicy, it's sort of really quite it's it's subtle. Got, um, yeah, it's a subtle cinnamon melon. Yeah, Christmas, like Christmas. Uh, not a as Christmas. Yeah, a little bit of Christmas, but not too Christmassy. See what I mean? Oh yeah, I like that one. That that's, one. That's I like that good, one too. That's that a good one. one. And this is the coffee one. I haven't tried the CBD thing, yeah. which I'm not a great fan of that sort of oil. <coughs> is it drugs? Snake oil, yes. Yeah, from cannabis, isn't it? But it's not container of that. <laughs> I didn't know that. CBD oil, it's the new fashionable snake oil, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. It kills everything. Oh, that's, my least, that's my least favourite. Yeah, but like people have it close to do. CBD, people have that to help them help them feel better oh, from the variety of elements. Um, I'm oh, doing a disservice. Nice. Nice. You like the coffee, coffee one? one? I can drink that all day long. Yeah. That's lovely. It's a good one, isn't it, the coffee one? Oh, there you go. And if I had to rate them, I think I'll probably do the one I tried first, first the spice, spice then the coffee, then finally the CBD oh, nonsense. I like the coffee more. It's yeah, sweet, I, it's I, sweet, I, I would agree with that. How would you describe the flavour? It's, it's quite rounded, isn't it? I can mm. feel it all over my tongue, the flavour. Um, sort of Check spice right, and yeah. strong and but Drinks I think it's about it. I was listening to another podcast. No, you're recently. getting for Christmas. <laughs> I was listening to another podcast recently. No, there are other podcasts available. Really? Um, no, it was to do with, it was to do with drinking and um, another subject matter. But the way they described their drinks was actually a little bit more detailed than this one. I thought it was quite. They're interesting. probably more qualified. I think they drink a lot more. Than maybe, us. maybe we need to learn. Yeah, well, I was just thinking there with the rum. I don't have the um, into the, the the tongue to explain how that rum feels on my tongue. Um, but I'm trying to. It feels like a rounded flavour, um, strong at the back, smoother than a typical rum, mm. um, but still very sweet. Which okay, I quite liked. Down the sides of my tongue as well. Yeah, that's. It. I felt like a horseshoe mm. almost effect. Mm. Which I found very pleasant. Back to your ciders. After all that rum, what, what were you drinking cider wise? So we're drinking a Hawks Urban Orchard Apple Cider. Yeah. Yeah, which I would describe as complex and rich and crisp <laughs> like a and kind of wine like. That's that, from my that's I'm not reading the bottle at all. Now he takes a sip. Mm. If anything, I was guessing the apples. I'd say maybe Braeburn apples in there, maybe some Bramley and Gala apples nice. It could be, could be. Mm. Here's my problem with this cider. After the rum it feels very nothing. Uh, so maybe I like if oil. I drink it beforehand, but I think all Spoil the complex flavours. I quite like it. I quite like it. It's quite nice, but it's quite um, neutral on the tongue, isn't it? Do you, mm. do you feel is that just my taste has well, been killed? I, for me, right now, that's, that's good. It's tasty. It tastes like apples. Yeah, Cause... I could drink a lot of that. I could drink a lot of that, but it's, it's yeah, it just not got the slight edge to it. So, what do we want to talk about today? What's on? What, we've got Nigel here, so that's a hello. It's a uh, rarity these days. Yeah. That's, What's uh, what's been in the news recently that isn't political? Everything's political to a certain extent. I thought your idea of experimentation with this rum distillery being yeah. about Let's go with that. Then. We could talk about experimentation. Okay. Because at the Vienna conference, which I was at a few weeks ago, yeah. the keynote was Alec Ostwalder, I believe, mm. um, who spoke Alex, about Alex. Alec. Alec, maybe Alec. I think um, it was Alex. I think it's Alex. Yes. I'm not Alex. nice to get a name wrong. I got the name right, and then you got <laughs> no, it wrong. You didn't. I said Alex. You said Alec. I said Alex. Did I say Alex? I, I, I anyway, with Nigel. <laughs> we'll play back the players back later. But the point is, is that it's good to experiment with names and get them wrong and then fix it. <laughs> um, but he did a whole thing on about modern businesses being about explore, um, failure having to be an option, many strands of attempts of idea mm. compared to exploit, you know, traditional business like a mining company with stable dividends and grinding out the work. And so I think more and more and more of us are realising that, in fact, even those of the exploit companies. Mm. Are actually an explore company, so we just don't realise it yet. So, okay, so this company, we don't yet know whether this is their first foreign. <laughs> You're talking about the where, yeah, we, are, where the we, distillery, are, we are, distillery now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if it is, then they've got a certain amount of risk, haven't they? So they yeah. Massive got, amounts of risk. Surely. This yeah. building. Yeah. Probably uh, the time lease. frame on the lease, I yeah. imagine. 
they've had to kit it out. Yeah. And oh, there's an investment in the whole the distilling process, right? Because yeah. perhaps not so much with rum like with whiskey. I mean, you do age rum. Yeah. But you do create inventory. Yeah. Yeah, massive. And there's right. a big risk. That, We're just looking at it in front of us now. Yeah, you try it in 12 years time. Yeah. It's been 12 years aged, and it's, it's not good. Not good. It doesn't sell. Yeah. Presumably, you can test it along the way. Yeah. But because at the moment they sort of have to boot themselves up anyway they said their distillery is not running yet yeah and so they're having to get going and selling drinks before they actually start distilling so that's a good idea of getting moving quickly mm -hmm. um, but there's a risk there because you have to pay for all this stuff mm. it's true but then again I guess if you look at it from a sort of so the overall business mm -hmm. may have risk associated but the actual individual experiments run in the business may not mm. so much so they could try and experiment with their new distillery yeah. if it doesn't work it's only a few gallons mm -hmm. of liquid a bit like disney plus expand well disney has a very very resilient stable business but mm -hmm. they're experimenting they've invested a lot of money but is that yeah. was that experimenting or is that following the fact that everyone else is doing it so disney felt they had to have a well, I presume they're cutting off some revenue streams because they're taking their products off yes other platforms and assuming that people will pay another subscription. Yeah, and it is another yeah. subscription. Isn't it? But then they've surely had to, haven't they? Because if they don't, so it's like with Blockbuster. They said so. The story about Blockbuster is they had the chance to buy Netflix, mm. and Did they, they didn't. Yeah, for like Did ten they? million or something, or really? hundred million, but low money, and they didn't buy it. No Maybe way. because it destroys their current business model, which yeah. is the brick and mortar shops. Yeah. But then reality destroyed their current business model. Yeah. <laughs> and so there was no choice. So with Disney, you could say Disney Plus is an experiment, but it's an experiment they've got to do, because if they don't, what else would they do? Well, they, they still own the rights. Oh, so you mean they could just be content provider yeah. for other networks? Yeah. Mm. yeah that's true. Whereas, it sells that, they've, they've cannibalized that network. Yeah, to make their to own. To try this one. Yeah, stream. And they, they, they can always roll back, I suppose, if it yeah. doesn't work, but they've just got to write off yeah. the investment in the. Yeah. In the Platform. Well, wasn't it originally um, Sony Films or wherever they were at the time, like out of Columbia or whatever, back in the 70s mm -hmm. and 80s, only let their films be released on Betamax because okay. they own Betamax. Mm -hmm. So they kept it, and then after Betamax failed, they just let their films be available on everything. Um, there's something else around this for me, and I don't know enough of it because I wasn't really following the news, but there were some issues with the launch of Disney Plus, weren't there? Yes. What were, can, did you know what they were? Uh, volume testing. <laughs> so it was um, crashing. Yeah, yeah, too many people trying to access it at once. But it's um, only available in the States right now, is it? Is uh, it? States and other countries. Okay. Um, but it launched in the States. Obviously. Right. Me being cynical, do you think that was deliberate? Oh, how popular we are. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's a very clever idea. I just think the downside of people not being able to access TV shows is more than yeah. uh, scarcity. Is a and well, if they want to do scarcity, they could do that. Yeah, like the old. Publicity is no, it's a good publicity in a way. We got attention. But do you remember Gmail and stuff when it launched? You have to have an invite yeah. for it. Yeah. I can imagine if they want to do that fake scarcity, you could do something like that. Yeah. You could only get on Disney Plus with a Disney Plus invite. Mm. But I don't think they did that. But uh, there seem it seems to be. You, a thing, isn't it? It's just normal now for a launch to not work properly. Yeah. Kind of expect it. And it's a way of gathering well, why do you think that is? attention. I think they get more attention from that than if it had been a successful launch. I don't know, because the TSB had right, exactly. that, didn't the they? TSB, yeah. And that's been in the news. Of the huge reports come out, which I read half of it. <clears> but that's because they couldn't fix it. So for the benefit yeah. of worldwide listeners, of which we have many, you'd have many, to explain hundreds, what TSB hundreds. is. Uh, the Scottish Bank, isn't it? TSB stands for? Mm. I don't know what it actually stands for. Mm. Yes, I think I believe it does. But um, it's a, a bank that basically, well, what they, they switched over... They were bought by a Spanish bank. Santander, was it? No. No, it's one of the other ones, but they were going to switch over their system That's to right. that bank's internal systems, and the switch over was done in one big mass migration. Big bang. And went poorly. And there was I mean, customers... It took them months that, to fix yeah, it. Yeah. Months. Yeah. There was people that had Businesses either loads of money that wasn't yeah. theirs in their account, yeah. or a lack of money that yeah. they had they before in their accounts. It. They yeah. couldn't access it. Yeah. It was a catastrophe. It was a catastrophe. Yeah. But yeah, I About think... 12 months ago, was it? <clears> yeah, yeah. Well, lots of people have been There was no. There was no benefit to them with no. that kind of thing whereas Disney no. it was a look they were looking for attention they were looking for publicity TSB didn't want publicity they wanted that to go under so the they wanted radar. to go wanted seamlessly yeah. and for me it was the fact they couldn't recover whereas if you know you can recover quickly then actually back. failing publicly might not be as bad as it looks 
So you're saying you've got a like the strategy. Tesla van from the other day, they've got loads more news because he smashed the windows of the van by mistake than he would have got if the windows hadn't yeah. been smashed. Possibly. I didn't see it, but yeah. Did that happen? Then? Yeah, so um, Musk went to show how the windows won't smash and, it smashed. and smashed the windows. Mm-hmm. But it happened in an Apple thing as well. Some, is it Steve Jobs or maybe the guy who's replaced him but couldn't get something to work on the, in the demo of the yeah. Apple, Shook. the iPhone? Yeah. Yeah. And it got, again, like, people love, love that kind of negative but, press, don't they? But again, you'll be a little bit careful with that because it depends on, if your product needs to be known for reliability and for trustworthiness, yeah. then that flakiness is bad. If it needs to be known for cool and cutting edge and exciting, then that flakiness could be cool. Mm-hmm. So with you with Disney+, Plus, I think it's really interesting. I've never thought about it, but Disney+, Plus could be looked upon as like, that's my TV, that needs to be reliable, mm. like electricity. Mm. Or it could be looked upon like, wow, this is so cool and you like a Tesla. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's, it's allowed to be delicate, shaky, it's delicate. New, delicate and yeah. cool and new. And I really don't know where Disney Plus is supposed to fall and I feel it should be like a utility, like water. But just thinking about it out loud, I'm not sure. Hmm. But we, with broadband now, is that I, my expectations of broadband connection is probably greater than I actually get. You know what I, I mean? Yeah. I, I expect it to be like a tap, turn it on and it's full full bore. Yeah. But then yeah. all of a sudden, you turn the tap on and nothing comes out. I yeah. think, well, what's wrong with my tap? Is it my tap or is it the, provi- the yeah. water yeah. provider? Well, you know. Yeah, I think they still haven't fully We're not there at all broadband. yet with broadband. I'm that going to argue good. against myself now. Okay, good work. And say so that because you mentioned they were following, so they're not the first company to do this, mm. Netflix have done this and other people yeah. have done this, that they should be expected. They're not, they don't have the, the grace and goodwill of the first yeah. mover. Yeah. They should be yeah. better. Yeah. They should be better. Be better. Yeah. better. They, yeah. And they've had a lot of time to do this. They, they've been planning this for a long time, haven't mm. they? Uh, so maybe it's just a, a sign of poor quality and technical debt. Yeah. And the thing we about, get sued for this. No, the thing about, no, it's hypothetical, allegedly. The thing about Disney as well, <laughs> Disney's brand's very strong, but it's very strong yeah. in terms of classic Americana. And so that brand tends to give it, so like Coca-Cola, it's a brand that tends to have depth and strength, not move fast and break things. Yeah. So as a brand image, I don't think it's good for Disney either. If they were someone like Google, maybe, but because they're Disney, people expect a certain level of, you know, quality. Yeah, quality so let's, so I might be wrong here, but let's, let's so the other alternative, the, the other competition is also Apple TV, isn't it? That's not yeah. just launched. So, but what, so Disney have got, which is not done very well at all, is it? What? Not done very well at all. No, that's my watch. point, is that, so they, got to market before Disney, I think. Yeah. yeah. But they didn't have any kind it's of USP. Apple TV, was it? Yeah. Was yeah. Apple? They were just following the Netflix, the Amazon Prime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But did they bring anything new to the party? I well, don't know. The, the original shows. Well, content, content is content king. Is... So they had their own content that you couldn't get anywhere else. Right. Which but that's kind of, even Apple well. TV now has kind of disappeared. In, in well, my, there's, off there, my radar. Yeah, there's that um, Jennifer Aniston TV show, The Morning Show. That's the only thing I know about is Apple it? TV. There were others. So, yeah, Amazon Prime's out there as well, isn't there? Yeah. With a few. But Prime, so my wife watches a lot of Prime. She, she spends a lot of time on that. But I, th- I haven't really Any heard of anything. She, she likes it, yeah. What shows on Prime? Oh, she watches lots of things I haven't heard of. But um, once, she, once she's found one mm-hmm. she likes, it, it obviously. The yeah. good thing it yeah. tends to. <laughs> Mr. Robot was yeah. good. That was on Prime. Oh, I, 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 I watched Netflix, you see, so. Yeah, but she, there's. For me, Apple TV didn't really bring anything. But you said to me this morning about this yeah. idea of Disney Plus and the fact that they've got rights to a lot yeah. of movies or yeah. franchises that yeah. I'd be a fan of. Well, we're going to have to buy it because all the Disney stuff allegedly is going on to it. And my kids love Disney. So, so with that, I wonder if it's it. Sky though. Sky are losing their Disney in March, that's what I've been told. Allegedly, 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 allegedly. But they are, yeah. Well, they've lost wrestling. Wrestling's going to what, BT in January. Is it yeah, losing a lot of their sports as well? Anyway, this is very UK dominated audience. Yeah, yeah, but the point is, is What's the, so, let's go so, bring so, us back so, to no, the point. Bring it back to Sky. So, Sky, a big traditional company, they made a lot of money out of satellite television. Which has been that they've been the, the winner of that argument. BSB died in the yeah. 90s in the UK. And now satellite dishes are, are redundant, aren't they? Yeah, you can well, get, you can get Sky Q. Yeah, through, through, the, through the internet. Yeah. Um, but also, Sky, what do they offer? Their business model's under threat, yeah. hugely under threat. And what are they going to do as a company? Now, we know guys who work at Sky. We know Sky have got a lot of agile teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but true. the trouble is, are they being agile in their product delivery yeah. or in their business model? Yeah. Because that was Alex's point, which is you need to be agile, agilify your business model. Um, yeah, ding, ding. nice, nice word. Um, and that's my issue with Sky at the moment. It feels like they can use Agile to deliver new sub-products quicker, 
but the overall product direction from an outside point of view yeah. looks under threat from these streaming content. As a players. customer, yeah, I, I dislike being a customer because I'm getting less than I was before and I'm getting yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. For me, the movie selections are poorer sports. because sports are poorer. Yeah. And so they're going to have to do something on that. If they don't, they will be another um, tombstone in the graveyard. Yeah, they will be. They'll be another the Kodak. Yeah. You heard it here first. But I remember when Sky were cutting edge. Yeah. Brand new, they were the yeah. disruptor. And that's the issue, was it? Um, um, uh, I think uh, the UK Prime Minister at the time, Cameron, said to Blair, said, you were the future once. Mm -hmm. And then when Cameron went, someone said it back to him, you were the future once. Mm. And my concern in terms of what we do Okay, the legacy business is a legacy, and some of them understand they need to change. My concern is the companies who were the future ones. Yeah. And do they know that actually there's not agile is not a change; it's a method to change, and they need to adopt that wholeheartedly to create an organisation that will change. Otherwise, they could end up dying like the legacy companies. Do. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. It all comes back to experimentation, not just on the team level, on no, individual no, no, no. level, but when organization. When was the last time Sky experimented with something, do you think? Well, was Sky Q, Sky isn't it? Is, is Sky Q no dish then? No, you no, don't need dishes anymore. I didn't but know. that is a poor, I, they've tried to sell that to me, yeah. and it's, it's a poorer service than is what it? I get. So yeah, I refuse yeah. Poor in what way? The it's getting store. a little bit personal, but I, I can't get it on as many TVs as I want to. Mm -hmm. It relies on Wi-Fi rather than cables, and my Wi-Fi, so even with Sky Broadband, broadband is not great. That's the only reason, I think, because I've um, got a lot of phone calls asking me to switch over to Sky. Mm -hmm. I'm still on an HD box. Yeah, same here. And with a dish, and the, the only reason I think I haven't is because um, of reliability of the connection. Yeah. My and I can't issue. rely on my Wi-Fi. They also store your safe shows mm. on the cloud, yeah. not on your box. I like them on my box. Yeah. Having said that, Sky's been timing out shows recently. They've been very kind of expiring shows off yeah. boxes, which is a bit naughty. Mm. But I like having my stuff stored where I can control it a bit. Yeah. yeah, rather than have to go online and get it. Again, so what, how can we make that? The control of your own data, the control of your own content is important to customers. So think about how we can make that back to experimentation. You know, they've experimented by taking control of our data mm. um, to make, uh, give us a better service, but do we want to sacrifice control of our data? So what's the, let's bring this back to where we are now. What's the, what's the new here in this venue, this establishment? What, what, is the, what are they providing here that any, any of the... I think there's been a trend over the last five, the five plus years of micro generation, you know, the craft beer, the craft cider, mm -hmm. the craft gin. With yeah, something they, more unique, more well, different. Just, yeah, 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 just, yeah, and rather than going to the big, bland, nameless conglomerates, and this shows if something's made on the site, it just feels a little bit, oh, this is in my Close town, to this is in my street, this is almost you know, going back to this is something part of my community. I think there is something about the making of something, isn't there, that makes people the craft, makes people feel good about it, knowing that it's handmade, locally made, seeing it being made makes them feel more valuable, mm. more, more, more treasured. And, and you've never heard of a few people that can have it. Mm. Yeah. Like if you actually want to have this batch, you have to be here. You can't mm. go to the supermarket. Yeah. And also rum is just a unique thing. I've not heard of rum distillery. I've heard of, you said gin, I've heard of yeah, whiskey, whiskey, I've heard of, but never rum. So that seems to be an angle as well. Hmm. Do you think it's going to take off though, this one? This place here? Yeah. To speak a bit quieter there. Do you think so? I have no idea, mate. I don't know the, I don't know the market. So, I, the think, area so I, can, I can compare it to so one of my good friends um, back home is just opened their own business. It's a kind of a, more of a wine bar. They, they don't distill their own wine, but it's, it's make their own wine. They, they're a wine merchant and a wine emporium. Mm -hmm. um, so people go in and drink, it's a, it's a licensed bar. But where we live is a very low footfall area, so they're not going to get a lot of passing trade off the street. You're on yeah. Park Street here, yeah. you're going to get a lot, lot of Saturday night, yeah. you're going to get a lot Students. of walking past yeah. here. So where they've started their business is very low footfall, so it's about multiple revenue streams. So you can look at this place here, they've obviously got um, a lot of bottles behind the bar, yeah. which are universal, kind of, you can buy them any bar, yeah. but that gets them into the... Park yeah. Street yeah. locale, right? So you, people they can come in, they can come in here, they can drink. They may not be able to drink everything. Yeah. They can see, yeah. but they can drink something that they know. Yeah, that's what. But it's about trying to have these multiple business to business or business to the internet side of things, a bunch of sell online or whatever it might yeah. be. That's 
probably going to keep these types of businesses afloat. Yeah. I would think this place would have to have a strong internet arm yes. selling bespoke rums to fund this type of building in this location. I think that's. I think you have to have an internet kind of an online element to whatever, whatever you do. People kind of expect it, I think, these days. Yeah. yeah. So I, I came in here and said, you know, kind of, um, we'll tag you on Instagram, because obviously the podcast is on Instagram now. Thank you to this, yeah. Jeff. Um, so, but we, we can help publicise, and you ha- you, it's only easy to do that if they've got an online presence. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're not selling online, you need an online presence, yeah. Um, well, people look things up on the phone. So we, this just this morning with this place, I saw it walking here. So I literally walked past this place, Googled walking it, down. Yeah. Um, I got to Jeff and said I saw a bar. Yeah. I don't know if it's even going to be open. Yeah. And we Googled it and saw it opening time. Well, here we are. It, and here we are. So you have to have that. You can't be a Luddite. <laughs> So is there so any equipment? Multiple revenue. So streams. what do you think the online? So we joke about having an online presence, and only a, a stupid business will not have an online presence. Mm. But what do you think could be the next step of that? So what's good? So for us now, that we think is um, uh, mad, and yet the future will think is do a go for advertising and for re- outreach. Because you were joking about Instagram, but I've never done anything on Instagram. Mm. I don't want to take pictures of my food. <laughs> I want to eat my food. <laughs> and you know, is that is that mm. why I'm being a luddite? Why yes. say, well, that's a little bit TikTok. You know what TikTok is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My kids have talked about TikTok. I, no. I don't have any idea. Was it short videos or something? Yeah, it's short videos. It's good. It's fun. Fair, um, she's got a video that's had 35, 36,000 views no this morning. Oh, wow. That's better than any videos you've ever done, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. Combined. Yeah, she does. Combined up together. Yeah. So, so, so we've discovered that the real talent in the family is in the next generation. Next generation. Of course, naturally. But it's difficult to know, isn't it? It's difficult to know what the next delighter is going to be. We don't know that. Yeah. That's well, it's not even a delighter, is it? So you're considering now an online presence is part of your definition of done. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a delighted feature. It's, it's not there. It's compulsory. It and we just, you can't imagine what that's going to be. It's, it's so almost to impossible me, to imagine. So it's something go. to do with DNA, something to do with something like a chip in your arm or something crazy like that. Let's know? go with that Carno model right yeah. now. So the delighter for me here today was that, that I didn't know, you probably saw my reaction here, was that tour. Yeah, they offered so they the offer, that's something that I didn't expect when oh, I came Has in. that come through on this, or did it go through the gap? I don't know. So, so they've offered us a tour of the facilities here, which is very nice. I did, but they, when we came in and mm. uh, showed a bit of interest in what they were doing, they offered that, that you didn't expect to get. They may not offer that to everyone I, mm. I, on a Saturday night. I doubt they would. But it's that, that little extra that's probably going to increase your opportunity in this market that yeah. that might get us talking well, so more about saying, it. It's going to increase your attachment and that's part of the social online presence is creating yeah. an attachment. It's yeah. almost like an online friendship, isn't it? You, yeah. you have an attachment to that brand. That... Well, this is very fascinating because uh, Howard said, Howard Sublet, uh, the, the chief product owner of the Scrum Alliance, said at the conference about how uh, they want to move the Scrum Alliance a bit away from transactional learning yeah. into more coaching. And actually what I'm realising now, that's not from training to coaching, that's from transactional to relationship. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's really what modern businesses like this need to do. They can't be too transactional, like the do that comes in on a yeah. Saturday night. They need to build up relationships, people who come back, yes. who they have this, this reports, like the local family environment where they come many times, what they need. You know, and that's building relationships as a business, mm. not building yeah. um, transactions as a business. And for that, you need to have a very strong idea of who your primary persona is, who you who you are aiming this type of yeah. establishment yeah. at, and you're targeting them and their friends yeah. and their friends and their friends. And you've got to really delight them to yeah. build a relationship. You've got you can't to, just you've got to go them. the extra mile. Yeah. It's going to be delight. Mm. Mm. So, just do we? Do you feel? That. Do you feel we as trainers? as coaches, as agile companies, delight our customers enough? Well, I think I have a, a good relationship with people. I have a community, I have a lot of people that follow me and interact with me and we, we talk a lot. And... But enough about us, Jeff, what about your customers? <laughs> <laughs> and I like to think that, you know, we give, we give a lot, we give a lot of these free podcasts away where this is a lot informal, sharing is like inviting you. It's like we've got, so you are, the video is being hosted on a chair, a fourth chair yeah. on the table. So literally, you person. are at our table. You've been yeah. drinking rum with us. Yeah. I hope you um, enjoyed it. Yeah, lots of lots of free videos and, and tweets and things and people that can. It's a relationship. We, we talk about stuff. Mm. It's not just uh, come on to my course. Say, and I'll never yeah. see you again. I would yeah. say I'm still. A lot of my customer base is is 
peer to peer. I think yeah, it's, all, all, all miners. Yeah. It's I get um, very little from you know, new alternative or online or, or whatever yeah. marketing streams. It, it streams. Yeah. It's personal relationships that people I know, people that know me who've talked about me to someone else to whatever that yeah. might be, gone to a different yeah. company and shared that. So I think I think it's massive in, in our industry yeah. because we are talking about people related processes mm -hmm. that people related change. You've got to have a connection yeah. with people themselves. So do you think that's going to change though with some of the because you know we all know that Agile's got so big and popular that there are many large corporations um, being very interested in this, but they never historically were. Mm. And do you feel they still build that relationship, that rapport? That no, I don't think they do. No, I think the ones that do it out of necessity don't. Yeah, that's a very transactional approach. So we, we will buy agile. Yeah, but I think I enjoy the. You know, I get, I get personally, from my my own yeah. personal perspective, I get more out of a stronger, smaller relationship, more personal relationship than yeah. I would with a. A big blue chip company that's just hired me to tick yeah. a box. Mm. When there's some investment from them that they're willing to invest in me rather yeah. than just in what I teach. Yeah, they're investing in Paul Goddard, not Scrum yeah. Training. And I think I, I get personally, I get a lot more out of that than just you know just turning the wheel. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking just because most of my stuff is long term stuff these days, not not new. It's relationship yeah. for relationships. Yeah. Which is great. And it's going back and revisiting yeah, yeah. and people connecting, reconnecting with people. But just thinking back in terms of just harsh commercials, you know, in terms of I'm happy with what I do and how I do it, but let's say I wanted to build the next Accenture or something. Yeah. I think the trouble is with that type of thing is it has to be more. What I mean is, would those types of company have to become, so let's say, let's say Agile Bear, would it have to become that type of company? to achieve that success, mm. or does the modern world mean those types of company have to become more like our types of company? Mm. Human, relationship-based, you know, long-term partnership, not transactional. See what I mean? That's, that's yeah. what I was having, is it, you know, because my concern is that businesses, not ours, but businesses like ours would become like them when they get big, mm. and what they should be is businesses like them becoming, becoming more like us. I'm trying to think of an example of a big company that I feel I have a stronger, closer, personal connection to. Yeah. There aren't many. Well, I'm working with one at the moment. Well, a couple, but one springs to mind. And it's, it's, I find it fascinating how senior leaders are struggling to understand how to act. They genuinely don't know what to do. Mm. They're worried because they don't know how to act. Um, but they've got to make some decisions. And they know that they're being pulled in different directions, their head and their heart. And mm. When under pressure, they'll revert to what they think is safety, but actually, paradoxically, what they think is safe is actually the riskiest thing they can do. Yeah. Um, the difficulty for me is, when you talk about business models and sustainability in long term, is if people are buying Paul Goddard, mm. how does Paul Goddard take a break? No, exactly, yeah. Yeah. You know, how do you ever stop Mm. If you've got this community that's all over the world and they're talking to you and you want to give they them need a rich your experience, yeah. Yeah. you're always on. Mm. You are, you're the utility. Yeah. That's, that's the difficult bit. You, know, you don't have the opportunity of a faceless minion who can, yeah. you know, ten of you, that can, that can do something. And, and it is, that's, that's what I like about what I do and that's what you guys like about what you do. It's training. Mm. <clears throat> and there's, there's got to be some, I don't, when you say is it us about becoming us, is it about us becoming more like them or them becoming more like us? It's not, I don't know, it's somewhere in the middle, isn't it? It's, mm. they wouldn't, those big companies wouldn't want to be like us and we wouldn't want to be mm. like them, so we just wouldn't. Mm. But I think the element of flattening those different hierarchies, but also us trying to create a more sustainable yeah. future is, is not a one person, mm -hmm. always on mm. type thing, mm. different challenges. And I think the future will, will still have those big companies and it will still have the little companies. It'll probably have more of the little companies. Yeah. If you took yeah. a proportion of 50 years ago, mm -hmm. it will have more little freelancers than, yeah. than it did then. Well, it just comes back to what we were saying, the whole Disney Plus thing, there's just going to be more choice, isn't there? And those, even amongst what we do, there's more people doing what we do now than there was 10 years ago, mm -hmm. than there was 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. People are going to have more choice. We've got to, and if the personal relationship is what you leverage, mm. 
That's what makes you different. So back to Disney Plus, will the market support more choice? Well, that's that's the paradox of choice, isn't it? Well, it's not a choice. That's not a choice. Yeah. Because you can't. It's not you can go to Disney Plus right. for your Star Wars movies or you can go somewhere yeah. else. There's only one place to get it. Yeah, but the question is not do I want Star Wars movies from Netflix or Disney Plus, it's do I want Star Wars movies or not? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's actually a choice you can make. Yeah. I could say, look, so if I had my interests. So it's binary, not, it's not yeah. multiple choices. Yeah. The biggest still choices, but I can choose off my choices. So um, I'll give a real life example. Uh, Nigel, our oh, sophisticated man, um, I will probably get Disney Plus. With the Disney and the Star Wars mm-hmm. and the Marvel, um, I currently have the WWF Network, the Leslie mm-hmm. Network, mm-hmm. right? About the same price as Disney Plus, right? Yeah. I'm not going to keep both of those on. I don't want to spend twenty odd pounds a month on that. Yeah. I'll probably just drop the uh, WWF Network because mm-hmm. I don't get it. I don't watch it much. It was nice to watch old wrestling from when I was a kid, but I've yeah. watched that now, so I'll drop that. So the, the choice is between Disney and that. That's the choice, not what platform I watch it on. Mm-hmm. So people may become more picky on what they choose to, mm-hmm. to watch, you know, NBA or NFL. Like, imagine there was a Premier League channel, a Premier League streaming service. Mm. There'll, I, be, I, mer- I, there'll I would, be mergers. Hmm? There'll be mergers in the future. Yeah, yeah. Mm. But then, is it going to come back to a few key players again? <laughs> so we'll be saying 10 years' time. That's quite to... normal, isn't it? You go yeah. from conglomerates where Sky yeah. owns everything yeah. to lots of fracts. Fraction, fractal. Fractured. Fractured. Um, it's offerings, and that's the other extreme. It's the pendulum, and then it'll sort of go back a little bit this yeah. way, and then it'll come mm. a little bit that way. And I think it'll probably end towards the side of the yeah. multiple infinite channels rather than towards yeah. the side of the conglomerates. So, it's of, too many channels anyway. Yeah, so, thinking of Alex's thing about um, ex, uh, was it um, explore, exploit, sky on people like that, or exploit. Yeah, now we've shattered back into explore again. Mm-hmm. We're going to be the explore for a while, and until this thing starts settling down and some of those streaming services become more exploited again in the future. Yeah. And that's the thing for me, in terms of yeah. Agile or not, or Scrum or not, is that it's not necessarily the process or yeah. ticking boxes, it's, it's, it's all up here, isn't it? Yeah, the mindset. It's just about yeah. thinking. Are you thinking in a yeah. adaptable way? Yeah. Are you thinking about what aren't we doing that we what's should next? be doing? Yeah, what's Getting next? Complacent. Yeah. Too big to fail. No such thing. Well, well, that's, I, that's I, what keeps me keeps me interested. I bet our, our old employer, four weeks ago, did not think it oh, was God. up for nationalisation, did it? It's part of the <laughs> Labour manifesto. A bit of a shock, a bit of a shock for them. Again, um, you'll have to explain that for yeah, them. So, yeah, so, well, basically, um, British Telecom, our old employer for many decades ago, was recently revealed to be semi, will be semi-nationalised by one of the political parties. Potentially. If, potentially. If that's part if of they, their manifesto. If, if, if they win the general election, yes. the idea is they would part nationalise uh, the a telephone lot of things, As well as a few other things. A lot yeah. of things. Yeah. Like the rail Energy. and the mail and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually, if you're in continental Europe, would not be unusual to you. Yeah. <laughs> because you will have nationalised mail and rail and energy mm. and phone. But for Britain, we privatised that in the 80s. And so nationalising that would be a bit of a shock. Um, but imagine their business model, their ideas, their futuristic plans of where they're going to take yeah. the telco, a nice exploit area. And oh my God, we've got to innovate, innovate, innovate now. So you never know what's going to creep up on you, do you? Talking of exploring, we should probably tip them up on their offer of this tour. This tour, is, yeah. And we'll explore the before story. it gets too busy. So I think we're done. Idea. Oh. Yeah. That was, was a purely Cheers exploratory part. It was, and okay. I would like to say I thank you for helping me explore those ones because they were quite nice. Okay, Cheers, everyone. Just have another one of those before we go. <laughs> Cheers, everyone. Ta-ra.